Hey everyone, welcome to another Defend Your Picks, the show where we all learn from your drafts at your local game store, except it's a pre-release draft, so we're not at our game store, we're at Draftaholics HQ, and I'm Richard, and today I've got Martin with me, and Martin's going to go through all of his picks in our first uh, draft of Hour of Devastation Amonkhet, and uh, let us know what he thinks about the format, and uh, hopefully we can all learn something and be ready for the online drafts. All right, Martin, how did it go? I think uh, there'll be a lot to learn from this. It was my first ever draft that I've done. I played one pre-release on the weekend. So to be honest, like a lot of us, I was reading a lot of the cards yep. immediately as I first opened this pack. So in terms of like what I was trying to hopefully open, obviously one of the gods would have been amazing. Um, to be honest, I really like just opening any kind of removal. Uh, I saw yeah. this God Fairy's Gift. Um, to be honest, I wasn't sure. I saw seven costs, and considering the format that we just came from, that yep. seemed like not worth my time. Right, eh? I might Too not expensive. get there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You also definitely have to build around a card like that. Yeah, and I think I'm not exactly sure, but you only get one shot at getting the other side of that card. The um, the throne, I think it is, of the God Fairy. Uh, the um, the one from the previous set. Yeah, yeah. So there was also a little the little blue guy in there, the uh, thieving magpie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like that, but to be honest, I usually are on the side of just you know cautious picks, some removal, or something like that that mm-hmm. I can go in. Here, um, I really like lethal sting. Supreme um, will. Yeah, supreme will is pretty sick. I really like that uh, three two. I think it is that pumps. Yep. The uh, Devotee of Strength. Uh, Supreme Will I was looking at quite a lot. Obviously, it fits in with some of my colors, but um, I'm not trying to get tied down into anything mm-hmm. in terms of those first picks. So Lethal Sting, I thought, was something that I was pretty happy with, but obviously the modality of Supreme Will was <laughs> calling to me quite a lot. Yeah, it's good. The, there's also a, a rat in the back there. Obviously, that's not as good as the Lethal Sting, but... Um... It's, it's useful to have a look about what's going to go around the table and might get back to you. That's very true. And uh, the rat obviously does quite a lot of work against the aggressive kind of creatures coming in at you. And also against the embalming creatures. Very gets true. Gets rid of them out of the graveyard. Another lethal sting. Yep, I was very happy. Um, the one card I also saw was the uh, the red creature. I think mm-hmm. we're coming back to it. Yeah, the burning... Um, I, I forget the name of the second part, but Fine, yeah. we'll see when it comes through. If you show yeah. it again, Burning yeah. Fist Minotaur. Yeah, Burning Fist Minotaur. So that that card is great, and um, obviously then we're going into four colors. Um, I'm not anticipating trying to build a four or five color deck <laughs> at this stage. <laughs> um, the Unsummon I kind of looked at as well, just trying to note the cards that were coming around. Yep. But to be honest, getting past a Lethal Sting again so soon, I was pretty happy with Yeah, pretty hard to get off that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You're still thinking about it, though. Yeah. Shuffling them around. The other thing I was thinking about at this time was the fact that my first card also had the blue half. So I was thinking, do I just force white blue or should I go for black mm-hmm. and then just stick with the first, the front half of that card and maybe splash the back up? Okay, so what have we got in this pack? Anything anything useful for you? We've got an, an aerial guide. We've got a few dorks. There's, a, there's also the uh, the sentinel spider, basically. Yeah, there. yeah, no, that's very good. And, like, I'm obviously thinking at this stage, that's, you know, three fairly good. Obviously, Gift of Strength isn't fantastic, but there's still three fairly good green cards there. Um, I'm still kind of thinking aggressive-minded, and I know I've got that first pick, um, so I was thinking maybe the Ketra's Ave- Avenger. Mm-hmm. Um, aerial Guide, to be honest, you know, obviously in hindsight, I wish I could go and grab that card again because um, that would have been very good in my deck. I think it's a very good uh, three drop and being able to send your big fatty into the sky and then if it's boosted or any kind of thing, especially with the new Afflict mechanic, like yep. for example, the 1 3, that would have been very good to have hit in the sky and I think someone Draw actually some cards. Uh, did that to me in the game so that was very it's a, a secret it was me <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so you've got you've got a kind of direction going on here that your second second color isn't really decided yeah but um, you know you've got you've got some direction uh, what do you have a feel 
I know it's all new to you, but you have a feel for what is being passed to you, what you think is open at this stage? I definitely, with this Merciless Eternal and obviously with the uh, the sting that got passed to me, I think black is definitely the colour that I need to cut. Um, four black cards in that yeah. pack? Yeah, and uh, white, I think my uh, drafter to my right mm-hmm. is in white. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't entirely sure at that stage of the second colour. Obviously... Um, the red cards have been passed to me. A green, multiple good green cards have been passed to me. Um, so I still wasn't kind of sure, but I was fairly confident white is out of the picture. So just forget about that color. Focus on what I'm in at the moment. Um, again, that that Moloch I think is actually not a, not a bad card, especially if we're in a format where we're just, especially drafts where mm-hmm. we're just looking to. Uh, hit as much as possible, and that can hit very hard in the first strike. I took um, that 2-3 uh, whenever you cycle and discard because it has quite a lot of synergies with those colours. Um, Passing up on a on a, uh, a red removal spell for 1-1s one and a few things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that green card is very, very good. Uh, but then I see the 3-3 three, three marauding um, Bone Slasher, which, I mean, again, if we're in aggressive format, a 3-3, three, three, mm-hmm. I don't really care if it's never blocking because I don't intend to do that. So, But if you're going to play blue, you might need to block sometimes. It's a bit of a balance, balancing act there. That's true. And that's the one thing, again, with the new format, I'm not sure in a draft whether the blue is an aggressive blue or whether it's an offensive blue and we're just trying to control... Because um, some of the cards you see, say going back to the 1-3 Afflict, that's not really interested in blocking anytime soon. It just wants to get in and force the issue. So I, I was kind of, to be honest, with any deck I'm drafting in this format, thinking more aggressive than defensive. You know, mm-hmm. we're not in M14, for example, yeah. where I'm just Games playing claustrophobia. Forever. Yeah. Um, again, another Grizzly Survivor. Um, I was really happy to see that. But unfortunately, I was thinking, like, at the time, I was getting a lot of green cards passing me, so that card I felt like had a higher upside at the time, but I think I would probably take that back and have taken the Grizzly Survivor. Yep. Good for everyone to realise. So you've got another Blur of Blades there, uh, which is a very aggressive card, and that's a giant hexproof monster. Correct. Yeah, correct. <laughs> uh, exactly what I want to do. Um is that exactly what you want to do? That's if, you, if you're attacking, you don't necessarily want a giant um, seven cost hexproof monster. True. I guess if we're going to compare to the um, the sandworm, I think it was the mm-hmm. green one. I feel like this card with hexproof is kind of more where you want to be at because at least it can uh, be equipped, you know, with a cartouche, swing in, and be pretty safe. Yep. Um, so I, I actually don't mind that playing that type of card as a payoff for getting to the long game. And you can cycle it away as well. So Yeah, very relevant. So I think that's pretty good. Yeah, strategic planning. And without weakness, I think it's very interesting with some of the cycling things. Um, I, yeah, two without weaknesses, probably not. If you've, but... got a, if you've got a giant, if you've got a bomb to, to protect, it might be all right. Without bumping the power, like how good do you think that is as a combat trick? I think it's pretty average, like, to be honest. Um, it's not something I'm excited as a 14th, you know, uh, card. Um, you know, the end of the pack kind of card. I'm not too disappointed to see it. But mm-hmm. to be honest, uh, it's. I think it's a card that's probably not going to make my deck. Um, we'll, we'll see how the draft pans out. But I think in terms of the cycling synergies, maybe that changes the equation. And does this... It's a cycle for two. Does that... Um... Does that change your your thoughts on it at all? I or how does that factor in for you? I definitely think cycling two is definitely very relevant compared to say cycling one. If we're looking at the um, the serpent that cycles for one, being able to efficiently use your matter on your turn is so good, mm-hmm. and um, that taking a turn off to maybe cycle that and find a card that you want. Uh, this this pack, to be honest, was horrible. It made me quite sad when I opened What's it. What's the rare? What's the rare? Yeah, so so far we've got an unquenchable thirst at the start. Um, a, a love. Oh, it's a it's a uh, a wrath. A wrath. I can't remember what it's called. I can't see it on top of the, the card there. Yeah, I think. Um, but triple triple white. Triple white. I think it is. So yeah, I was just like looking through, like, oh, have I not missed the card that could make my deck? <laughs> the one card like that's really good, I think, is Desert's Hold. I think that's a really really good. And uncommon. A, an arrest. Yeah, an arrest, and um, you know, 
obviously my pack one pick one i think we're too far down the road um i'm not sure how you feel about that but unfortunately this is one of those cards where you just take it and it's a tough pick i think yeah. i might have still gone with the rest just just in case because yeah. like how many times is that card you know making you making a difference to your deck mm. is the other thing but it, it's tough and I guess the thing with um, this new set is there's quite a lot of fixing. So, you know, maybe that in hindsight is a card that would definitely make my deck if I picked up some fixing in these next few packs. Mm-hmm. Um, having paid, played in the pre-release with uh, Manolith, I think that card wasn't very impressive for me. So I, that was sealed. And in draft, I think taking turn three to play a, a thing that taps for any color you manage. Just get run over. Correct. Especially yeah. with uh, Overcome in the format and uh, the, uh, the red white deck is still very good. Yeah, so there I took on Summon just as a quick kind of combat trick. Um, again, these kind of initial packs weren't fantastic. Uh, I was very, very happy to see that. I think uh, Aerial Guide again is a very good card. Yep. Hopefully I took it, but I'm pretty <laughs> <laughs> There's the uh, the red-white uncommon there as well, which is... Uh, I know you're never going to play it, but it's, uh, it's a beating of a card. There yeah. it is. Hour of Revelation. Hour of Another Revelation. Another one. Yeah. Yeah, so some, some lucky soul ended up with uh, three wraths in this pool, so that was very what? good. It's two yeah. Hour of Revelations. What was the third one? Uh, Bontu's Last Reckoning. Bontu's Reckoning. Yeah. yeah. So th- that won't make it into here, so... And so everyone knows there was actually four us in the pool because oh. I had a dusk till dawn, dusk to dawn. Also, never got to cast it, but so lucky. <laughs> it was a very, um, very dense with rats um, set of cards. This particular set. So there, I took um, Desert of the Mindful. Just uh, again, I wasn't really happy with that. Um, I forget the exact name. Say it's a really poor circular logic um, where you counts the number of cards in your graveyard, but I'd much rather just something to mitigate um, mana flood. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, with the aggressiveness of the format, at least if you draw one of those lands late game, it's not like, you know, a scoop. Mm -hmm. Um, You can at least see your next card. Hopefully it's good. Yeah, Supreme Will is very good. There's a... uh... A flash fly there. I, I don't. I personally don't like that card very much. So, how many how many supreme wills or similar effects do you need before you want to start playing those flash fly, flyers? That becomes the question, right? And and is that good? Is the other question? Is the format uh, does it allow you to be able to cast be casting four mana two threes? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, it's a very good question. I think for me, like one supreme will will make your deck, and then. Anything after that, I probably would want that creature as like a combat trick. And obviously, flying is invasion, uh, evasion as itself. But mm-hmm. at the same time, yeah, Supreme Will is just so good. The modality of it, um, even when it's a dead card, it's not because you know you get to impulse. Yeah, so hour of eternity. Hour of eternity. Yeah. Again, you know, first draft. You're just going to take of, it to try it out? Definitely. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, like, this is kind of... Even, you know, obviously we're trying to draft as serious as possible. At a, as a new set, you know, you're trying to see what the cards are good or not. And the only way to do that is to play them. So, so, the, so the fail case... Well, if you don't have any creatures in your graveyard, it's dead card. Mm. But if you've got one creature, it's five mana for a 4-4? Four, four. Yeah. I think... I think you'll be really upset if that's what you're uh, casting it for in any mm-hmm. game. I so think... you need to get to seven, get two four fours. Is that worth it? Yeah, and that's that's the question. I wasn't sure when I took it. Are we are we in a format where I can even get to seven mana? Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, I do think you're gonna in these colors gonna have creatures in your graveyard because you're cycling them away. So I wasn't too worried about that, but um, yeah, it was very relevant. And of course, triple blue yeah. like. Is there a big mana deck? That's the other thing. Is there a green blue deck that could cast that card? There is the two four mana elf and mana lifts. I know we already talked about the fact that they yeah. might be a bit too slow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it could be there. It could be there. And I mean, is that like again, like is that the payoff that you want? Like <laughs> yeah, obviously, a like a bunch of four fours. Yeah, as opposed to like say you're only going to see it in one of these Amonkhet packs in terms of. Um, a possibility is Sandworm Conversion so mm-hmm. you know like that that is absolutely something you want to ramp towards but you can't know you've got it until the very end yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a tough spot but I think that's a good measure of like what you're trying to compare that hour to is you know what what are you ramping towards is that going to end the game because Sandworm Conversions will end the game pretty much yeah 
I'm, I'm on the side of I think it's probably not good, but I'm, I'm, I agree that you should just try it out in the early days. Reason belief. I was obviously the front half of that was in my colours, and then Moaning Wall. I think it's that's not a very good card. I play with that in the pre release, so I wasn't very impressed so with it. Are you ever going to play a countervailing winds? Would you ever play the uh, the bad logic knot, as you put it, the countervailing winds? I think um maybe in hindsight, probably one of them could have made my deck, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't have been ecstatic about it. It would have been you know one of those last cut cards, and yep. and it's a non creature spell as well. I'd much rather be having creatures. Yeah, blood water eternity. The, Entity, sorry, the fact that it wheeled and the refuse, <laughs> I was obviously thinking to myself, how, how is that possible? But, you know, that's where we're at. And the Vizier of the True, um, yeah, obviously whoever was uh, white, which turned out to be the case, I was correct in that. Being able to get that as one of their last few picks was amazing. Uh, a gift. Yeah, absolutely. Gift of the God Pharaoh. We've got... Oh, it's all white cards to finish White up. is green cut very hard. <laughs> all right. So, you know, you... We're, you're probably not going to get anything else in this pack. Yeah. You know what's in the Amonkhet packs. We've played them plenty of times. What do you want to open? At this stage, what I was really thinking of was one of the bomb blue rares. So, I was thinking Sphinx. Glyph um, Keeper. Glyph Keeper or Sphinx, the... Curator of Mysteries. Oh, uh, yeah? Um, so, 4 4? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Glyph Keeper is absolutely us. You know, tap the pack kind of thing <laughs> if that was possible. But, you know, um, that was absolutely what I was trying to open. In terms of how my deck is now, mm-hmm. I definitely think it needs like something like a Glyph Keeper. You know, I was looking through, and to be honest, I could see there was like some synergy there. I had some elements, um, but. So, the question I, with this kind of deck is you don't have a huge amount of low to the ground creatures mm. so you've got to try and play a control type game do you have enough removal and card draw to make that control game work yeah i think cycling obviously kind of creates a tension with that because you're cycling away relevant threats that could trade with creatures and whatnot i mean i was very happy to get the three deserts because that mitigates some of that and you can cycle into removal mm-hmm. i do think like I need a bit more removal, um, and obviously I have the Supreme Will as uh, some counter magic. I think, uh, yeah, it, it's it's not there yet. It's not like to the case where I can say, ah, oh, I've sufficiently got my removal, that's it. You know, right. I, I'm not going to pick up, say, uh, a final reward if I see it or something like that. Something that can deal with um, some problematic permanence, uh, especially the exile clause, is pretty relevant in this set. With the uh, the big scary jewel coloured gods yeah. running around, they're very hard to get rid of. I mean, I was also very um, looking forward to like seeing how the stings work in mm-hmm. practice, um, as opposed to you know just the the downside to it seems quite low to be honest. So yeah, his being able to put a negative one counter yeah. on something, <laughs> yeah. Essence scatter, obviously. You always it's like good start. when you You've see got a something. Good, yeah. a good fallback position. <laughs> Absolutely. Cartouche. That's Love pretty it. good too. Yeah. Yep. And you've also got a uh, a uh, Shimmering Drake there. So they're all cards you would play. Yeah. But come on. Come on. You can do it. Yeah. Decimator uh, be uh, a crocodile. Ah, uh, uh, no, yeah. No, you didn't Even Mind Sensor. So, yeah. With this, uh, I was looking at actually... In terms of what I had, I, I, I kind of recognized that I had a lot of three drops. Mm-hmm. But then the cartouche just kind of changes race equations very quickly and can allow you to get this. So I, I ended up going with the cartouche. Essence Scatter, I think uh, I think both uh, have merits in Reasonable terms of their picks. picks. Yeah. That's your final reward. Yep. So Slamming it or you get another creature? N- I think, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much slamming that <laughs> just, just to kind of round out the removal. And then in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm done now. Like, I need to start prioritizing creatures. So, yeah. So, the problem now is you, your early creatures or interaction. Oh, boom. Hello. Early yeah. creatures and interaction all in one card. Yeah. I spoke too soon. Yeah, exactly. So, this is a smiling. card. Yeah, I wanted to see. Um, Do we know what your cycle count is? It's got to be up around five or six by now. Yeah, that's about correct. So, um Hey, another one! Bang! Yeah, I couldn't. To be honest, I couldn't believe that. Like, You've gone way out of focus. But um, yeah, that's how excited I was. So, <laughs> uh, Ruthless Sniper, obviously, two of them. Um, you know, on a board can just you know they're pretty much a wrath of themselves, and they can just control the game. 
So yeah, I was really, really happy to see that. Gives you a way to deal with those little creatures you didn't have before. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it makes up for not opening a Glyph Keeper, so... <laughs> well, we've got some more interaction if you wanted a Lay Bear or a uh, Winds of Rebuke. But yeah. are you going to take the creature instead? Yeah, I think I'm at the state. Oh, let's, let me think now. Winds of Rebuke was pretty good in the, uh, yeah, in the previous format. I think my initial... For- Think uh, thought process was like uh, I should take the creature, but then I remembered that wings. Uh, if it's a very fast format, maybe I might want that interaction. Mm-hmm. And now I get to see another, you know, splendid agony. And I think, uh I just need to take the two drop. I, I have not got enough two drops. I've got two of the uh, stings. The sting. Um, Doom Dissenter is very happy to take that negative negative one counter. Um, yep. So yeah, I just took that. So splendid agony, of course. You know, maybe. In hindsight, obviously, if I could go back, you know, I'd love uh, Splendid Agony instead of a Windsor Rebuke, but unfortunately, that's not how the packs kind of mm-hmm. fell down. Just uh, are you taking a crab or a t- random two drop? I took the random two drop here. Um, yeah. Crab, I feel like, obviously, I know I've got to try and get triple blue for this hour, but at the same time, I felt like the three drop was more than covered. I've got the cycling ones. Um, Supreme Wills, the Sting. Uh, he's a useless rare that's not relevant. <laughs> you just, to have, anything. To, you just yeah. have to read it a few times to make sure you know what it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was, ha- I was like trying to will that to be something actually relevant. Um, unfortunately, that's one of the cases where, you know, you can cut a color and then what you get is unfortunately a non relevant rare, but so be it. You can play any of these cards. So, yeah. I mean, it. it it proves that you're probably in the right colors and getting a shimmer style drake back on the wheel was is awesome great for your cycling and just having another fly for the late game is a, is a good a good pickup i think trespassers curse i just don't think that's even a card so i was like <laughs> trying to think oh maybe i might try and hate the person to my left like what what do they really want um i think yeah Probably I was too kind there. I figured oh, they're all pretty rubbish cards. I was really happy to get the Miasmic Mummy on the wheel. Again, that's like another two drop. Um, and the Reduce Rubble didn't end up playing it, but it's relevant. You're getting all cards that are, you know, you could play them. Yeah. Here, so it's not a, it's not terrible. Yeah. I mean, the Pillars Vizier gets better if your cycle count got up. Got yeah, up I think well. I, the final count was roughly around seven. So I, I, I think it was like the bare minimum of what was necessary to make it work. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can find out by magically clicking this button and ta-da, here is ta-da. your deck. So it's the final deck. Uh, what do you think of it? What, do you, what would you score? Would you give it out of 10? I think, you know, really objectively speaking, um, I would give it like a three or four. Like to be honest, when I built the deck and studied it, I thought if I can go one, two, uh, I would be, pretty happy if i go 2-1 i'll be ecstatic but like that's really high ceiling um, so what's what's the missing piece what's is it is it just a big bomb is it yeah okay yeah so <laughs> i think um if i if i open you know like say what we opened in one of the packs was um a glyph keeper or another kind of relevant blue bomb in um hour of devastation or, or even black obviously um that kind of would have been the missing piece um, I feel like there's synergy there. We've got cyclers. We've got a few things going on. But at the end of the day, you're trying to close out games. And I felt like a lot of the time I would get to a state in games where I just couldn't get over the finish line. Yep. Yeah. Get them get them down, but just couldn't follow through. Mm. Did you ever get to cast the Hour of Eternity? I did not. So ah, never got to even try <laughs> yeah, it. Exactly. Um, and there was never a game even, you know, where you're looking at that card in your hand thinking, what have I done to myself? Um, so unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> maybe no I'll just have to it. draft it again. Yeah. <laughs> what about the, uh, the giant hexproof monster up there? I did not get to cast that. So, I mean, maybe, uh, there's a bit of mana flood, um, sorry, mana screw there. And I didn't get there in the games that I had and I had to cycle it away to make my land drops. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, again, unfortunately it wasn't the kind of good data point that we're looking for. But I, I, I still stand by that. I think it's still a, a very, very good card. And yeah. the fact that it's cycling one is very good. Yeah, well, good. People can learn from uh, from your mistakes and from your wins. <laughs> so what did it? Um, what did your deck actually... What was the win rate? What did you get in the end? I went the old 0-3. 0-3? Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, so... Did, did you win any games? 
Um, no, actually, the games that you know I I was close to winning were exactly what I'm talking about. In a sense, you know, I had opponents at three or five and just couldn't close out the the game. So uh, I think, yeah, unfortunately, that kind of shows that's the difference between, uh, say, a below average deck and uh, mm-hmm. average to good deck is just being able to get over the line there. Mm-hmm. And uh, who? What would you say was the all star for what? What kept you in games? What What gave you a chance at the of these cards? Was it the snipers? The snipers did quite a lot of work, but obviously they were uh, killed on sight quite a lot. Mm-hmm. I would say actually the card that most impressed me tonight uh, was aerial guide. I think um, going forward, that's a card that I'll rate really highly. Um, it sent uh, silly little zombies to the air. Um, it allowed me to kind of race in situations that maybe this deck could not uh in Amonkhet. yep uh definitely a green blue all-star i'm sure yeah throwing, definitely throwing a six seven hex proof in the air would be a i'm sure a all philosophies like to fly. <laughs> yeah. flying insects yeah they have wings i think oh, all insects so we'll be fine um <laughs> all right um thank you martin thank you for going through uh Thanks your picks much. um uh, I hope everyone at home hope you learned something from this. It's very early in the format. It'll uh, you'll you'll be seeing this after it's up on MTGO, so you'll be um, you'll be learning from people on there as well. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, yeah, you can find our website draftaholicsanonymous.com. Uh, go there, leave me a message uh, from the feedback form. I read them all. Thank you to all the people that have already got in touch with me. Uh, it's it's appreciated. And also, you can get us on Twitter at draftaholics and uh, draftaholics MTG at Draftaholics MTG. Uh, we're, we're active on there and every, every, I'll reply to everyone. And if you would like to be part of it and you're in Melbourne, give me a call as well. Uh, it, we do this every couple of weeks and it's great fun. So yeah, Might even be a phone close by. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Uh, so thank you everyone and we'll see you next time.